in the 80s i should have been canceled i should have been canceled uh, as a really young kid uh, i was afraid of my black bully at the time and i at the time wished white supremacists would come save me from this poor little boy uh, i should have been canceled but instead i was counseled and because i was counseled i became the anti-racist that you see before you also, when I was in the 80s, I used to make fun of developmentally disabled kids. I used to call them the R word. I used to make fun of developmentally, uh, physically disabled folks. I should have been canceled, but instead I was counseled. And now, as you see before you, an ability rights advocate. In the 90s, you think things would have gotten better as I grew up. But even in the 90s, I used to make fun and make degrading jokes about women. I also, in my relationships, as I've disclosed before, I uh, can't say that I 100 got for sure consent before I moved on and attempted to do things in physical relationships. That should have had me canceled, but instead I've been counseled. Now I know and understand consent, and now I know and understand the power of women. And I can say that now, because I wasn't canceled, and am now counseled, I can call myself a feminist. I also can say and look at you in the eye and recognize that I am a male anti-rape advocate. I talk to men about our problem with rape and attempt to get men to stop raping others. Also in the 90s, uh, I remember saying things of disgust and concern when I saw male and male pornography. That should have gotten me canceled, but instead I've been counseled. And now you see before you an LG LGBT plus ally, advocate, and some folks even consider me family. You see, I wasn't canceled. I was counseled. And because I was counseled instead of canceled, it allowed me the opportunity to be somebody different. It allowed me to look at behaviors instead of identities and evolve into a better human being. So today I'm going to talk to you about the idea that council culture is greater than cancel culture. And we really need to consider rethinking how we take on systemic ism and problems that divide us. Because back in the day, I should have just been canceled. Thank God I got counseled instead. And I had the opportunity to change my behavior and become a different person. So with that, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about some of the problems I see with cancel culture. Um, with canceling, People don't necessarily learn why what they did was wrong. They just learn that now they're canceled, that's it. No longer are you of help to the community. No longer can, you, can we use your voice to advocate on behalf of others. You're just canceled, that's it, boom, Twitter, canceled. Instead of an opportunity to talk to people, have them learn more about things, right? Change their point of view and change the thinking. Cancel culture is also a problematic notion because it fights people. Inherently, it attempts to attack the individual that did the thing wrong instead of t attacking the idea that the individual held that was so wrong in the first place. If we're going to attack people, we're going to live in an us versus them paradigm that never brings us together for a better understanding. We can't damn people forever. Now, we can give it our best shot with people, and people can choose not to evolve, but damning them forever doesn't cause a lot of new opportunity, doesn't cause for a new chance for change. Um, it creates that us-them idea, that in-group and out-group idea that we really need to look at if we're going to create a new space for us. Like every time you call somebody a Karen, you're canceling them instead of counseling them about Karen behaviors that they could choose to stop, that they could choose to do differently. And we don't want to judge people because as I just shared with you, if you judge with me in the same measure that you may judge others now, I don't think we're all gonna stand up to the measure, to the, to the level of like anti-ist or, or, or inclusive activist that we want to hold others to. It's so easy to look and go, you, you did wrong. You're terrible. You're the problem. But instead, we should look at ourselves. 
And we are all becoming more anti-racist over and over, over time. But do still racist thoughts enter my head? Yes. Do I still support racist policies and do I do racist behaviors at times? Yes, I do. But I'm attempting to shed myself of that behavior. And thank goodness I haven't been canceled yet. Otherwise, I wouldn't have the opportunity to evolve into somebody better. And one of the things that I want to note that came from my partner, Michelle Du, is that she said, cancel culture practices perfectionism. So Michelle said, when we attempt to be perfectionists, we are following whiteness ideals. We are following colonial notions and colonial practices. And this perfectionism is a white concept, a whiteness concept, not a white concept. It's a concept of whiteness uh, that holds one race above others in that it expects people to be better than just human. We're all human, and we all need to recognize that being human is part of the process. Being human means we're going to make mistakes, we're going we're to make breakthroughs, means we're going to have opportunities for learning. But when you practice perfectionism, and inherently that's what cancel culture does, right? It practices this notion of you should be pure, that you should be perfect, that you should never make any mistakes. Now, do you see where the problem comes in there? Because where's the, where's the space of humanity here, right? Perfectionism is a whiteness practice. Perfectionism is a colonial mindset. And we're putting that on top of each other and we're wondering why things aren't getting better when we're not per performing or expecting communalism, right? The practices that bring us together in a sense of community. The practices that bring us together that allow for our humanity to be there for it, right? We don't want cancel culture. Cancel culture is not who we want to be. It's not the standard we want to be judged by because it doesn't create opportunities for learning. It's just all or nothing. You're all bad or you're all good rather than really looking at where are you coming from and what is this idea that is in your mind that's making you feel and think this way? It's the ideas we got to fight, not the people, right? We want to fight racism. We don't worry so much about racists, right? We want to fight classism. We don't want to worry so much about classists. We want to fight the ideas, and we can fight the hell out of these ideas. Let's go, ideas! But I want to be really careful before I damn people and I make them irredeemable. Because as I shared with you, what if I'd been damned? What if I was seen as irredeemable, not able to get better? What do we want to do? Would we want to practice cancel culture? It's easy. It's fun. You look really cool, right? Blah, blah, blah is canceled. Blah, blah, blah is canceled. You said this in 2012, you're canceled. If you knew the things I said in 2012, you'd have canceled me a long time ago. It doesn't create an opportunity to get better. This is not what we're attempting to do as inclusive activists, and this is not the thinking that will allow us to engage in emerging evolution. We can't just cancel people. They're humans. It's the ideas we want to cancel, right? We want to cancel racism. We want to cancel rape culture. We want to cancel whiteness. We want to cancel colonialism. But it's funny because we attempt to fix the problem. We attempt to fix the issue using the master's tools. We're perpetuating the ism. We're perpetuating colonialism. We perpetuate whiteness when we think that anyone has the capacity to be perfect. And we don't give someone the space and opportunity to learn. That's why I'm not a big fan of this cancel culture idea. You can't just cancel a human being. You don't just cancel life. We can cancel thoughts. We can cancel behaviors, but we can't cancel people. So let's look at how do we, why do we need this idea of council culture? Well, council culture is brave, right? It is something that takes on ideas with braveness and forthrightness, and it fights the ideas with passion, with them, with vigor. It takes on these notions, it's, it takes on these ideas. It is centered in fighting for mutual understanding, right? Like I had to learn why it was bad to wish white supremacists on my bully. 
I had to learn why it was bad to make those jokes about women. I had to learn why I was just scared on the inside when I was so worried about LGBT folks loving who they love. I was messed up. I was wrong. I was broken. I needed help. I needed fixing. I needed healing. You see? Like, and you can't do it from a less than mentality. If you see someone as less than, you then become better than. And now we're in a working from a better than, less than paradigm, which sounds a lot like us them stuff, right? Like, if we can recognize where where we should have been canceled a long time ago, the things, the thoughts, the ideas, the performances, the acts, the behaviors that we did before that should have got us canceled and instead thought, hmm, Maybe they're just struggling with this like I used to. You're not so woke that you don't make mistakes. I'm not so woke that I don't make mistakes. Part of the reason why I'm as effective as I am is because I know I make mistakes. I own my mistakes and I talk about my my mistakes, which allows me for the opportunity to get better. We got to focus on calling people into community with us. We have to call folks into looking out for each other. We have to call folks into being their best selves. We have to hope and wish for their better angels to emerge within them. If you see the worst in somebody, it's super easy to be like, bet. You want to see the worst in me? Let me give you the worst in me. Stereotype works exactly this way. Stereotype threat works exactly this way. It works with the idea that you, I'm going to treat you some way, and then I'm, well, fine. Then I'll just be this way. I'll just be this thing. I'll just act this way, right? So, again, you cancel someone, you, you just push them further into their corner, and they're like, okay, well, I guess this is me. I guess I'm, I'm, a, I guess I'm a misogynist. I guess I am racist. I guess I am this, right? It just pushes them further away, and it doesn't invite them to come into community with you. It doesn't invite them to be with you. It doesn't invite them to show that this is just a behavior. It's something you can choose to stop doing. It's something that can be done differently in a way that makes you more of a happy and a whole and good person. Don't, isn't that what we want, just to be happy, whole people? And understanding that needs to happen. We need to be in a space where we're creating dialogue with each other. Why do you think this way? Why do you feel this way? Why are you worried about this thing? What can I do to help you with the problems that make you think this solution works? Because there's a lot of ways to solve solutions that aren't necessarily racist. There's a lot of ways to solve solutions that aren't necessarily classist. There's a lot of ways that I can learn as a man about one of the things that I'll, stuff that I'll do that's toxic, toxic is masculinity. I can become more whole. I can learn to cry. I can learn to have what are considered feminine feelings or just understand my damn emotions. If I can humble myself not to think that I have to practice this perfect form of masculinity, that's frankly just exhausting. But if I'm canceled, I'm just going to retreat into the masculinity that is so easy for me to follow and do anyway. It's just easy. I know what it works. I know how it is. This new way of being, I don't understand. I'm not very good at it. And obviously, I just showed you I'm good at this other thing. So why don't I just retreat into this other thing more rather than have to be stepping up into living my best life, becoming my best person, and learning how to heal from the ism that divides us. Council culture stands against in-groups and out-groups. It doesn't think someone's better than someone. It doesn't think someone's worse than someone. Like, remember, indigenous thinking means that if you kick somebody out of the group, that means they'll probably die without you. That is indigenous thought. The idea that we can separate someone from community and not understand that, like, separation equals sin equals death That's a colonialist idea. That idea, again, it's rooted rooted in whiteness. It's rooted in the idea that some people are better than others. And again, whiteness is practiced by folks that aren't just white. Colonialism is practiced by folks that just aren't colonialists. Anytime we buy into this notion of better than, less than, I'm better than you, you're stupider than me, you're bad, I'm good, this becomes a problem. And we need to look at this stuff if we're gonna try to find ways to get better. 
It believes in the ideas of reconciliation. It believes in the ideas of making reparations to a relationship to come back into co-being, to come back into a form of interdependence so we can become more whole. It's all about bringing people back into community, right? Cancel culture focuses on punishment. Cancel culture focuses on revenge. Cancel culture is anti-community. Cancel culture is anti-us. Cancel culture is anti-we is greater than me. Because there's no opportunity to change behavior to become and or do better. That's why I love this idea of council culture. When I had this idea, I was like, oh my God, council culture. We need council culture, not cancel culture. This is what we need so badly. It is a power of indigenous thought that allows people to evolve, to emerge, to get better. It creates the opportunity for someone to learn. It creates the opportunity for someone to heal from the hurt that they've been taught. It creates an opportunity to get better. It fights the idea and it doesn't like the idea of separation. Nothing happens with separation. It's just us and them all over again. Again, I've talked about this before. I don't want you to say politically correct words around me and think less than human thoughts about me. It doesn't do anything. I want you to understand my pain. I want to understand your pain. And then I want to work for you so you could be more happy, more whole, more healthy. And then I want you to work for me. And in that process, you will become more happy, more whole, more healthy. But we can still fight the ideas as hard as we want. We can be as aggressive and assertive when we communicate about them. We are aggressive towards ideas, but we're assertive when we're talking to people. It allows for the potential of cultural humility. It allows us to all be in a space and place where we're learning and we're growing and we're attempting to get better. Cultural humility means we always have more to learn about the differences that make us unique and special. And there's nothing wrong with differences. I see people all the time, these days especially, and on Facebook and on Instagram, and they're us and other people, right? They're damning other people. They're attacking people rather than attacking the idea that just happens to reside in the person. There's been a lot of gross ideas here, and I needed people to help me unthink these thoughts and restructure my thinking process. So again, I can become more happy. I can become more whole. Then I can become more healthy. I needed people to counsel me in this process to get to the place where I could talk to you about this idea. Thank God for those people that took the time with my ignorant self at the time. It's not like I didn't fight against that idea. It's not like I didn't kick against the idea. It's not like I didn't get frustrated or experience cognitive dissonance. I did all those things. And to do, and these people that taught me, that counseled me, that worked with me, that helped me, they saw the good in me. They saw that there was something redeemable within me. It, they worked on reconciliation. They helped me understand my need for reparation and my act, that I could do something different. And the fact that they believed in me so much helps me communicate these thoughts and ideas to you now. But if I just cancel these people, that could be another version of this person that goes around and helps heal people in the world, then I have a duty to do these things. So what is the notion of, of council culture? How can I explain more about what this is and how it works? It's more about creating and asking people to come into community with us. Ren, we don't call people out. We call behaviors, I mean, out. I don't wanna see even we call behavior out, right? Like, you don't say, that's racist. You ask, why do you feel or think this way? Do you think this idea or thought has anything to do with racist thought, racist idea? How could we make this idea anti-racist, right? Um, how am I buying into meritocracy? How am I pr promoting meritocracy and believing uh, stories that make lower class people less hardworking, right? We attack thoughts. You can attack the thought. You have to be careful with the thought because remember that person's having the thought, but we want to gently separate that thought from that person to make the person redeemable. We want to hold the person, keep the person, 
It's so important. We keep the person at the center of this. Council culture, uh, council culture sees the best in others. It sees the best in them and allows for the best of them to exist. It practices the human dignity within them. It speaks to the thou in them and it reduces the it in them. We've talked about this before, right? When we say someone is a thou, there's a person, they are a person, they're a human being. They're deserving of love and respect and uh, connection. When you treat someone like an it, when you just cancel them, when you just kiss, cancel a human being, and you forever make it so they can just stay in isolation with their horrible thoughts that are keeping them from being whole, that are keeping them from being happy. That's a problem. Council culture fixes this. Council culture takes on this idea, takes on this notion, and this is why we need to practice council culture more often. We want to fight those ideas and not fight the people. Fight ideas, not people. And every time someone thinks that idea is them, slowly separate that it's just a thought. It's just an idea. You can choose not to have that thought and idea. Every time I talk about whiteness, white people get scared that I hate white people. And I'm like, no, it's practicing whiteness that I want you to get rid of. Trust me, I practice whiteness too. Part of the reason why you listen to me is because I'm real good at talking whiteness to you. Which is hard because that's an acknowledgement of my weakness, of my dysfunction, of the disease within my soul that makes me divide people into us and them, that doesn't create opportunity for dynamic community. Council culture is very active. It is very active. It's not passive. It doesn't just allow things to slide. It, uh, it creates an opportunity for dialogue with every misstep. And that opportunity for dialogue, let me understand why you think and feel this way. Let me, like, let me make sure that I really hear you. Because every time someone tells you about their toxicness, you learn more about the, the classness of that idea. You learn more about the whiteness of that idea. You learn more about the colonialness of that idea. And you get better at extracting people from ideas and thoughts. Every time you practice council culture, you get better at separating people from thoughts, people from ideas, and you allow for the redeemability of people and the irredeemability of the behavior that's causing so much problem in the first place. Council cultures focuses on ridding the isms from people. It is the separator. It works on keeping spaces where people have the opportunity to get better people have the opportunity to learn from each other people have the opportunity to grow for each other so let's say even though it doesn't exist because this is a perfectionist whiteness idea a colonial idea that you really know there is everything there is to know about a thought or a concept or are, are you're personally as woke as you can get this is the idea right you still have more to learn about how the whiteness the colonial thinking hurts people by talking to people by coming to understand why they think this way and why they're hoping beyond hope that this thing maybe pans out for them because they're so scared they're so alone it helps make you better at council culture the more time you engage in council culture canceling somebody's easy block delete counseling is much more difficult and i will tell you i am practicing not cancel but I'm not engaging on some of these dialogues online because I don't feel like I can truly effectively counsel online. Counseling is a human to human thing. It's a, me seeing you, it's you seeing me. It's me understanding and feeling you. It's you understanding and feeling me. And it creates an opportunity for new thinking, new thought. Council culture does not allow ism, ist, thought. It fights against the ideas. You can fight the idea all you want. You can fight the idea with as much aggression as you want. You can be as angry at the idea as you want. Be angry at those thoughts and ideas, but don't mistake the person who has the idea from the idea and concept you're attempting to fight. Fight the concept as hard as you can. Fight the concept so you can show the person how this concept's hurting them, how this concept's making them separated from you. Uh, show them how this concept's keeping them from happiness, keeping them from healing. Show them, fight the concept, save the idea, the, the humanity of the person. Council culture focuses on reparations instead of revenge. Revenge, again, 
is a colonial thinking. We need to indigenize. Thank you so much, Carissa Sundas, for reminding me that I can't do decolonization. I have to indigenize my thought. I have to indigenize my practices, and I have to indigenize my thinking. We want to focus on repairing the relationship, coming back together, coming into wholeness. You got my back, and I got yours. When I got food, I feed you. When you got food, you feed me. And we don't have to be worried that there's enough because we have a whole community of people looking out for our well-being, looking out for the best of us. And when we make mistakes, they lovingly call us back in. Hey, 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 you're hurting. Hey, this is a problematic thing. Hey, you're us and thiming again. Come back. Come back. Be the best you. Be the person that I know that's in there. If those people that didn't know the better angels within were, were within me, trust me, like I'm a pretty charismatic leader. A lot of people follow me. A lot of people listen to me. Imagine if like I leveraged all that towards hate. How effective I could have been if I just got canceled. Instead, I was counseled, and things became better. So how can we engage in council culture personally? You're like, okay, great, Rowdy. You're a facilitator. You're a trainer. You know all these things, right? Well, what do I do? How can I practice this? First off is we need to under, understand there's a concept called civil listening. Now, this idea of civil listening means that all ideas need a fair hearing. That we need to consider the thought and idea at the very least, right? Now, I know that there's going to be people that would say, I am not going to consider a thought and an idea that diminishes my humanity. Okay, I understand that. But in you not completely understanding this idea or thought that allows this person to diminish your humanity, then this thought doesn't go through the intellectual rigor of being deconstructed. By you not listening, by you not understanding why this person thinking this poisonous bad thought that again is poisonous and bad for them too. I was listening to this book, uh, How to Be Anti-Racist, and uh, in it he talks about how white supremacists are really hurting white people badly, right? But because we don't like, like intellect intellectually challenge that notion and learn how to like undo the ism from the person, we're not very good at healing them. And then we allow this idea to exist around us and the people that are near us, the people that we could potentially affect. So what we need to do is sit down and understand why they feel this way. And so when we understand why, we need to ask people why they think and feel this way four different times. Why do you like this? Da -da 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 -da. Why do you feel like this because of that? Have them expound deeply on that why. Unpack the next why unpack the next why. You're about four whys away from understanding anybody's potential true deep meaning, true deep motivation. If we can ask why, deep whys, not just like literally why based questions four times, but deeply understanding the first why, deeply understanding the second why, deeply understanding the third and fourth, we get to people's motivations, we get to understand to people's aspirations, we get to understand people's fears. We get to connect with the human being behind them when we really understand their deep whys. I do this because I'm afraid for my family. Jeez, you know, I know what it's like to be afraid for my family. I'm afraid for my family too. Then we need to make sure that we completely understand what they said. So after we've asked the four whys, we need to attempt to paraphrase in our own words the position of the other person. And when we do it, we need to say, I heard you say blah, 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 because blah, 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 because blah, 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 because blah, 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 blah. Four deep whys, right? We need to reflect those four deep whys. And we need to say, is this correct? Do I understand you, your thoughts, and your position correctly? When they say yes, and not before, they have to say, yes, you understand me. And it's going to take a long time. And it's going to make you really uncomfortable. And you're going to get really pissed. And you want to just cancel them. But don't. Listen to them. Understand them. See where they're coming from. See why they feel and think the way they do. And then something happens, right? When someone feels truly, deeply, and completely heard, magic happens. Only when people have truly been heard are they then willing to truly listen. And 
even if they never want to listen, the time you spent hearing why they think the way they do gives you a lot of different things to think about. So again, we can get in this process of undoing thoughts and ideas from human people. We can attack this stuff. We can fight it. We can get better at it. We want to fight the ideas and save the people as much as we can. Now, when they're done and when you know they feel like they have been heard, you can ask if they would be willing to hear what you think. Now, if they've been completely heard and heard enough, they should be open to a better sense of listening of why you think and feel the way you do. But understand the whys are going to work with different people. Some people want stats and figures. Some people want uh, stories uh, of pain and suffering to, before they understand the difference, right? Um, people are going to need different whys from you. So you're going to need four whys of why you think and feel that way before they're really going to understand you too, right? And the more you can be a human, the more you can realize you're not perfect, the more you can let them know how you too have struggled with this, but then how you too have like gotten better with it, how you've healed more and gotten better and improved and become more dynamic and have this sense of community. They're going to be like, mm, man, I like that. Hmm. I might want some of that. Right? Council culture. It's powerful. Now, note. If you are an activist that is putting your life on the line regularly and doing this work over and over and over and over again, I might say you can be exempt from this due to the acute difficulty of your work. If you're an activist that's fighting for the rights of undocumented people uh, and you're in the sun all day, if you're someone that is like the leader of a Black Lives Matter movement, if you're someone that has been in the 99% like movement and, and you're a leader and you're in this all the time, I think it's fair to say you're not going to have as much patience to do the empathy work to have this conversation with others. So I might say activist level folks, folks that run nonprofit, folks that are attempting to change systems. And again, that's got to be your one and only job, not like your part time gig, right? My first and foremost job is being a communication faculty. This is what I do in my own time. This is why I have the strength and the ability and the time and the patience to take this stuff on. Now, I'm not saying these other people aren't strong, right? I'm saying they may be burnt out and their humanity has been challenged too much to do this in an effective manner. So I might say, again, if you're an activist, if you're someone that's engaged in the work all the time, I don't know that you have the emotional space to do this work effectively, and I understand if you don't. But understand there's other people that do and there's other people that can create change from that thing. But I also need you to know, if you're not these people, I'm talking to you and I want you to engage in more council culture. I want you to try, try to talk about the thoughts. I want you to try to attempt to help as many humans become whole in this process. And as you help them become whole, you will become more whole yourself. But it's hard. It's really hard. It's damn hard. You're gonna have to be patient. And you know what helps you become patient? Being in spaces that make you impatient. There ain't no better way to earn patient, to learn patience than to earn patience. Like you gotta earn patience. It doesn't come without testing. You have to be in a space where you're tested. Otherwise you're not gonna get much better, right? You've gotta earn it to learn it. So understand patience, empathy, connection, dis distangling ideas from people. It's going to take you a long time. That's why you want to engage as much council culture as you possibly can, because that art of separating thoughts from ideas is what inclusive activists do. It's what emerging people who are emerging in their evolution do. It's what makes us special. It helps us be these people. But remember, what if I would have got canceled in the 80s because I was afraid of my bully? I was just afraid. What if I would have got canceled in the 80s because I made fun of someone and called them the R word and I didn't understand what I know now? Folks with developmental disabilities are some of the most beautiful, wonderful people I've ever met. But I was stupid and scared. And you see how like that dysfunction made the problem? I used to make fun of people with physical disabilities because it made me feel better about myself because at least my body was whole. You see how sick that was? You see how I needed counseling so much? I 
was afraid of women for so long, and I thought I was unworthy of the love of women, that I would make fun of them. And I used to be so desperate for physical connection that I didn't know how to completely ask for consent. And again, I don't think I did anything bad, because at the time, I didn't know better. At the time, in the 80s, we didn't ask directly for consent in the same way we do now, because we were counseled on those things, and we got better at that stuff. And now I know... I have the enthusiastic consent of my partners, and I know I'm loved, rather than hoping I'm passable? You see the difference? You see how I need a healing from that? And then lastly, I learned more about love, I learned more about humanity, I learned more about positive masculinity from my LGBT brothers and sisters and intersex others and genderqueer others. They taught me more about humanity, how to be more of a full person. Even if I am cis, even if I am hetero, even if I am uh, masculine as heck, they taught me more healthy ways to become, to come into being, to be my best self. And I needed them badly in order to become so. I needed them. They helped me. So with that, um, understand that things have been hard recently. I have been talking about whiteness as part of my Healing Racism series, and online I've been seeing a lot of hate, and I've been dealing with a lot of hate, and it's been taking its toll on me. And so when I ask you to do this, I know it comes at a cost because I personally have been dealing with a lot of hate. I've been dealing with a lot of racism. I've been dealing with a lot of people yelling at me and screaming at me and getting really mad because I delete their comments. It's hard. I know it's hard. And that's why I'm also going to ask you in this to send me and the folks that are doing this work some positive energy, some positive thought, um, because I don't do this work alone. And without you and your support and your love and your upholding, I couldn't do the things that I do and we couldn't make the differences that we could make. But if you need counsel culture, uh, I'm going to practice abundance thinking versus scarcity thinking because I've been getting a lot of people reaching out to me saying, hey, can you do this work or hey, can you address this thing or how can you teach about this or hey, can you come to my company and do this stuff? I'm going to give you a list of council culture experts. These are the folks that I know that are the best at council culture, the best at healing and the best at wholeness. All right. So first one is Calvin Terrell. You know him from the Emerging Evolution podcast. Uh, you can get a hold of him at calvinterrell.com uh, or calvinbterrell at gmail.com. Uh, he is excellent and is amazing at helping you heal and get better. Another one of my mentors, Jackie Starks. I love her. There's nobody better than holding me accountable for being the best me. And it's funny because she's like very vigilant in making sure that I am held to the best accountability of being my best self because she sees the best that's in me and calls that out of me. But it's funny because she's very accountable and like we're not used to being held accountable all the time, but she holds me accountable to be my best self and she's been one of my most amazing mentors. Uh, you can reach out to her on LinkedIn or if you want to get a hold of Jackie Stark, she does have her own consulting business, Jackie of all trades. Uh, if you can't find her, reach out to me and I will connect you to her. She's an amazing black woman who has been seminal in my development and my path towards wholeness as I help heal the world. RJ Shannon is another member of the Healing Racism Committee. She uh, is on Facebook as well as LinkedIn, and I know she engages and does work. Uh, I know she's retired, but she still does some of the work every now and again. So if you want to reach out to RJ Shannon, she does that work as well. Um, Eric Tanches Jr. and Harriet Galbraith are going to be making their own company very soon. Uh, you can get a hold of Eric Tanches Jr. on Facebook, on LinkedIn. Uh, and Harriet Galbraith, the same thing. I believe Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram, both of them are on. And if you want their help in becoming more whole with your organization or how to do council culture better, again, you're going to need to pay these folks because they're experts in these things. But they can help you with these things and teach you these ideals to help you get to the place that you're looking to go. Um, also, Dr. Matthew Whitaker, another person that's been very seminal in helping me get better. You can reach Dr. Matthew Whitaker at diamondstrategies.com. You can get a hold of Dr. Whitaker on LinkedIn. You can get a hold of Dr. Whitaker on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, Dr. Whitaker is out there doing the work and has been doing the work for a long time and has been seminal in my develop as well. 
Um, I also have a friend, Jasmine Snipes, J-A-S-M-I-N-S-N-I-P-E-S. -S -S. Uh, that is her website, jasminesnipes.com. Or you can email her at jasmine at jasminesnipes.com. She just started her own business recently, and I'm really proud to see her getting into the work. And there's plenty of work to do, right? Like, it's funny, because a lot of people in my field are always like, oh, gotta, there might not be enough work. There's plenty of work. What you need to reach out is, a, is to a culture council culture specialist so they could help you and teach you how to do these things or help your organization engage in a process of becoming council culture specialists so we can council culture our way out of these problems and um, then last oh uh, second to last i want to reach out to uh tyler walls and suta calling last uh, they're from indigenousvisions.org. They run a nonprofit that does the diversity and equity and inclusion work from an indigenous lens and indigenous perspective. I sat in on one of their uh, trainings just the other day and it was like very wonderful and amazing and I was blessed. And then lastly, if you don't know anybody else, you know me. Uh, I'm Rowdy Duncan, inclusiveactivism.com. You can email me at inclusiveactivism at cox.net. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram. I'm not super active on those things because I'm too busy counseling other folks. But remember, we've had plenty of cancel culture and it doesn't seem to have canceled anything yet. It's just pushed people into corners that helped them hold the way they were thinking as valid. We want to engage in this council culture idea. Can we counsel healing and wholeness within to people? And another thing that I want to talk about too real quick with council culture is like we talk about people not wanting to get social justice cookies. Like I think encouraging healing and wholeness in somebody as they become a more full and happy person is something that we should celebrate. Not social justice warrior cookies, healing and wholeness celebration where we cheer for each other, where we're proud of each other's work, where we're proud of each other engaging in the process, where we can talk to each other about like, yeah, I had a council culture event, it didn't go great. But as we practice, we get better. And as we get better, we become more whole. And as we heal others, we heal ourselves. So remember, council culture is what we want to engage in and cancel council culture entirely. Be blessed. Thanks for your time and listening. And I can't wait to talk to you in the future.